Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. I'm Chris and today we'll be talking about this 3D printer, the DaVinci Junior. But first, if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, click the screen to join this awesome community. So this is the DaVinci Junior made by XYZ Printing. It's the smallest of the DaVinci line of printers and it is a fully enclosed printer capable of printing in PLA and it boasts a print area of 5.9 by 5.9 by 5.9 inches. But is it worth the asking price of 350 US dollars? Well, let's find out. So let's start with the machine itself. It is a fully enclosed printer with an attractive white and orange case, which looks quite nice with the internal LEDs shining through, especially at night. The enclosure is well designed with a magnetic front panel that locks open to reveal the interior. This is where the filament spool is kept and fed to the extruder through a Bowden system at the top of the enclosure. The hot end has a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and has an integrated fan and thermistor. The nozzle assembly is released with a press of a button, making it easy to clean or replace the unit. A single ribbon cable attaches to the hot end, supplying power and data, which I think looks very clean. Then we move down to the print bed. It is a single piece of glass with screw clamps to hold it in place. The print bed's mechanics are covered in a plastic housing, which makes it harder to stick fingers where they shouldn't go. There is no heated bed on this printer, so don't expect to print ABS on this machine. This machine is PLA only. As for print surface, they provide a set of replaceable tape surfaces which adhere to the bed. They are reusable, so you can print many prints without having to replace the tape. In the back of the case, you find spots for two outlet fans, although the printer only comes with one. They are decent fans, and they provide plenty of airflow to vent the enclosure. And finally, up front, we have the LCD screen and the SD card reader. You have your typical options of starting a print from the SD card, as well as homing the bed, changing the Z height offsets, monitoring your print status, and checking how long you have printed with the machine. Pretty standard stuff, so not much to complain about here. So, how does it print? Well, once you get a good roll of filament, which I'll talk about in a bit, the prints are actually pretty good. The quality surpassed my expectations, even just using the default slicing settings in their software. It's capable of printing anywhere from 400 microns to 100 micron layer heights, so you can get some pretty good looking prints out of this machine. There are no visible artifacts from changing layer heights, the scarring that you sometimes see on 3D prints, and even the top surfaces have a very pleasant finish. It's not the fastest printer. Even on their fastest setting, it seems to print slower than my Maker Farm but the prints are certainly passable. And the enclosure muffles the sound of the motors and fan quite a bit, so even while printing, the machine is actually surprisingly quiet. So let's talk about some of the gripes I had with this printer. DaVinci markets an easy calibration process, claiming that their machine is much more simple to calibrate than most other 3D printers. I think that's mostly marketing fluff, I find the calibration process for this machine to be about the same as my other 3D printers. And some of it's even inconvenient. The x-axis, you actually have to unscrew it, rest it on the power brick, which you put inside of your 3D printer. And the screws aren't even standard Phillips or flatheads, so it can be kind of hard to find the right bit that you need to use for it. There are two other main issues I have with this printer though. The first is their filaments. You must use XYZ filaments and spools, as they contain a chip inside to keep track of how much filament is left on the spool. Once that chip says that the roll is empty, that's it. There is no printing, even if you have a couple of meters of filament left on that spool. It is effectively DRM for the filaments. DaVinci is following the 2D printer market's uh, point of view where they sell very cheap printers, but they make their money up on the ink associated with those printers. However, instead of ink, XYZ Printing is restricting you to use their low quality filaments. Of the three rolls of filament that I have purchased, the first two, the clear and the black, kept jamming and I couldn't even get a single print to complete. I'd almost given up until I tried the third, this kind of translucent yellow, which actually prints quite well, so their filament is definitely a hit or miss. The black filament is actually so poor that you can see the inconsistencies with your naked eye. They sell a 600 gram spool for $28, meaning that you're paying over $47 per kilogram of PLA, which is absolutely ridiculous. 
At that price, there is no excuse for inconsistent filaments, let alone so inconsistent that it jams in your extruder. And my second major gripe is that their printer doesn't print with standard G-code. They have a proprietary file format, a .3W format, which requires you to slice using their slicing software. Their software, XYZWare, is not the worst slicer that I've used, but not having the flexibility to use the slicer you want is not something that I like. Their slicer has a very restricted set of options with almost no customization whatsoever. For instance, the options for shell are thin, normal, and thick. I can't simply say that I want n number of shells or a thickness of x number of millimeters. That's just not possible with their software. Even their speed options are slow, normal, and fast. That's it. There are no advanced options such as spiral vase, and you can't even change the infill pattern. Having such restricted set of options might be good for first time printers, but even after a couple of prints, you will want to be able to customize more than their software will allow you. And with their printer not accepting G-code, you can't just move on to a different slicer that lets you print those different options. You are stuck with what XYZ printing gives you. So in conclusion, while the printer itself is affordable, and it looks quite nice, and it can sometimes print well if you get lucky with their filaments, I can't exactly recommend this printer. The big benefit of this printer is that it is fully enclosed, and it's one of the few fully enclosed options in the $350 range. So I can't imagine some use cases, such as houses with small children, or schools where you need that enclosure to keep small fingers out from places where they shouldn't go. That is about the only time in which I can justify spending the extra money on ridiculously priced filament that you must buy from them in comparison to just spending the money to build an enclosure yourself. For the 3D hobbyists just looking to get into 3D printing, I cannot recommend this printer. You'll be paying way too much for filaments, and the options are just not customizable. You will be wanting more options even after the first couple of prints. So if you're a hobbyist, I would look into other options around this price range. There's actually quite a few of them nowadays. So this has been my review of the DaVinci Junior 3D printer. If you liked it, please leave a thumbs up. And if you own a DaVinci printer, I would love to hear your opinions. Or if you have questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section down below. And if this is the first time that you've joined us here at Hoffman Engineering, well, welcome. I do 3D printing, 3D scanning, 3D modeling, and even some cosplay pieces. So be sure to check out some of my other projects listed here on the side and let me know what you think of them. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching Hoffman Engineering.